Okay, so we're now three episodes into Game of Thrones, and there's one thing I definitely can tell you all. I hate Viserys with the fires of a million suns. I mean, I don't know how different I'm going to be from the majority of people who watch this show, but for the moment, yeah, I can say I hate Viserys far more than I hate Jeffrey. And, I mean, I know that I've got some pretty basic knowledge that eventually, at some point in time, Jeffrey's gonna do some things that are gonna show just how much of a horrible person he really is, but for the moment, part of me can at least kind of understand why he became the person that he is. It's made pretty clear early on in this episode that his mother, the Queen, has... He's a, he's a real spoiled individual. His mother has told him for the longest time that he's pretty much entitled to everything and will be entitled to everything else once the day comes that he eventually becomes king. So, and that's not meant to be an excuse for him, but I can at least, but I can at least see where he came from and how he originated. Viserys, on the other hand, look, I, I don't care if he, at any point in time, he had good reason to be, to be upset and bitter about getting exiled from the kingdom over the narrow sea. You sell your sister into virtual slavery. That is crossing a line, as far as I'm concerned. And especially the way we see him treat Daenerys later in this episode, yeah, part of, I'm really, really hoping that Viserys dies one of the most painful deaths possible, and if he dies by Daenerys' hand, yeah, then I'll be sold that Daenerys is one of the greatest characters in the world. So, with that out of the way, let's try to summarize everything that happened in this episode. So, let's go to the notes here. The episode, Lord Snow. The episode basically starts with... Lord Stark arriving at King's Landing and finds that, among other things, the kingdom's in massive debt because the king just has just spent lavishly on a whole bunch of things. Meanwhile, while that's going on, we see that Bram is, of course, awakened back in Winterfell, but he's crippled. He, he can no longer use his legs. And he supposedly has amnesia. He doesn't remember what happened before the fall. I'm going to wait and see as to whether or not it's actual amnesia or he's just more or less pretending because he doesn't want to reveal what happened. I guess we're just going to have to wait and see on that. Meanwhile, of course, shortly thereafter, Lady Stark arrives in King's Landing to tell her husband about the attempt on hers and Bram's life. She has to be hidden in one of the brothels owned by another member of the King's Small Council, Lord Baelish. Lord, this Lord Baelish, one, he's clearly a Marcus Lycus of this show, if, for, for anyone who's actually seen a funny thing happen on the way to the forum. It's also clear that he's had, and still has the hots, for Lady Stark, so... Clearly something's going to come of that later on in this show. They determine he admits that the dagger that was attempted to kill her was his. It was Lord Baelish's originally, but he lost it in a bet to Tyrion Lannister, the imp. Which tells me that the assassin definitely was not Tyrion, because... They wouldn't give that away this early. There's at least seven episodes to go in this season. They're not going to give away the actual usurper who actually is actually really behind all this. They're not going to give that away this early. And I really don't expect this show to pull a Nina Myers, which is good for me because Tyrion remains one of the guys I actually like the most in this show because despite him being a lech who drinks his, his way everywhere and obviously is addicted to whores. 
At the very least, he's one of the few people who likes Lord Snow, who's clearly supposed to be played up for sympathy. We also see that both Lord Snow, to work with the Night Watchmen, and Tyrion, who's come just to observe them, they've now both arrived at the Wall, and Lord Snow is clearly gaining respect from his superiors there for his excellent swordsmanship, but he's, for now, not very much liked by the rest of the young Night Watch because they're mostly people who have taken this job in exchange for, for avoiding harsher punishment because they committed a bunch of crimes and whatnot. So Lord Snow is finding himself in a very different scenario from where he was in Winterfell. And then there's Daenerys. This is, this is a really tough one for me. The good side is that she seems to be learning how to assume command of this army, the army of the Dothraki, to the point which they basically take orders from her and not Viserys. And that's something that Viserys does not like at all. So we're definitely looking at conflict there. The one thing that's, that's just, I find hard grasping around is that she's apparently accepted her marriage to the leader. I still don't know his name, but it's just creepy to see how those earlier episodes where she clearly was not liking having sex with this guy, and now it almost looks like she is in love with him. It's it's uncomfortable for me, okay? And now we've also found out that Daenerys is pregnant. So, I mean, I think whatever relationship she's going to have with her husband, it's going to take some, I think it's going to take a lot of time and probably a lot more for me to really still wrap around it. This is the wing that, I, I supposedly, I'm really supposed to like Daenerys and I do feel sorry for her and sympathize with her, but God, there's just some piece about it that's really unsettling to me. So meanwhile, what else do we know about what's going on in this world? Well, we've learned that apparently the war they've spoken of before was technically a rebellion, most likely by King Tyrese's family against who's no, the person who's known as the Mad King. I'm assuming the Mad King was part of the Targaryens that they were rebelling against. Apparently the Lannisters were first on the side of the Targaryens but betrayed them probably because they saw after they saw that the tide was turning in favor of the rebellion. And in fact one of the Lannisters that killed one of the most important members of the Targaryens was Jaime Lannister, Damien's twin brother who we meet in this episode, who for, for all intents seems to be, if he's not the captain of the guard, he's a very high-ranking centurion and it's pretty clear he doesn't like his position and to make matters worse, the king is pretty much throws it in his face all the time. It's almost like the king knows that the Lannisters are plotting against him and he doesn't care because he's so full of himself he thinks they'll never be able to do it. So he, he just throws it in the Lannister's face almost like he's asking for them to usurp them. And that's the main thing because what was apparently what's all is going on here is the Lannisters are looking to usurp the throne, the Targaryens are looking to, to declare a war on the kingdom to take it back, Meanwhile, the Night Watchmen over at the Wall, they fear an invasion by either the Wildlings or the creatures they call the White Walkers or something else entirely that they are eventually going to be able to overtake and come from the Wall. And there's not enough experienced soldiers on the Night Watchmen to stop them, so there's another force that's a threat to King's Landing from that side. And meanwhile, the king is a big lazy dick who's eating, drinking, and whoring his kingdom into oblivion and ruin. And that's pretty much what Lord Stark finds himself stuck in the middle of all. And clearly, the show is trying to make Lord Stark be 
another one of the sympathetic ones, because they show how he's completely opposed to continuing to put the kingdom in debt. We also see that he's okay with his daughter Arya wanting to use a sword, and in fact we see at the end he hires someone to help teach her how to use a sword, though as they fade to black it's pretty clear he's scared to death that she's going to end up in battle. And that's so basically, so we've got so many things happening to this kingdom, and yeah, so far, it's pretty much exactly what I expected. This is, for all intents, a soap opera in a Dungeons and Dragons setting, and all I can do right now is try to keep track of how many individuals I can actually like in this thing. We've got Lord and Lady Stark, their children Brahm and Arya, as well as Lord Snow, but Lady Stark hates Lord Snow, so we've got a conflict there. We've got Tyrion, the only member of the Lannisters worth liking, and then supposedly Daenerys. And those are the ones off the top of my head, so that's five, six, by my count, seven, maybe, characters worth cheering for, and... Somehow I get the feeling a handful of them we're going to have to stop liking by the time I get through this. But we're going to see what's going to happen after that when we get into episode four next time, I guess. <laughs>